Damn, first tee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, I'm Kendall and I'm Kat and we're gearheads here at Backcountry. Today we're going to talk to you guys about hiking shoes. We've got a good assortment here. We've got things from super technical, super burly to kind of um, super lightweight, very minimal and everything in between. Yeah, we're going to stick to the low, mid and high categories and then we're going to touch on some, some outliers that other people like to use as well. Sweet, let's dive into it. Traditionally, hiking shoes kind of break down into three categories, like I mentioned. First off, we'll go with our lows. These are the brand black Sanson shoe. These are like almost trending towards casual. You can see they're low in ankle coverage, so they're, you're really going for like kind of a more minimalist feel here. You can see they have the speed lace system. I have this one left undone so you can see how it works. And then I have this one tucked up so that you can see how it looks once you tuck it in for the way you'd actually be hiking in them. These shoes have a uh, full synthetic upper with a polyurethane coating, PU coating. So that's just going to give you like a little bit of water resistance. They're not going to be fully waterproof. Pretty soft in the in the sole here. Um, so they're going to they're going to move with you easily. Vibram rubber sole will give you reliable traction. You can see these lugs are substantial, but nothing super crazy. And so, like I said, they're also appropriate for casual use. They have these pull-on tabs. They also have very uh, minimal ankle padding. Good good shoe for like more low mileage, casual stuff. Maybe you want a shoe that you can like wear to the office, go straight to an after work hike. These yeah. are perfect. I would say either low mileage or even if you're doing more mileage but nothing super technical, that's a really good shoe. Yeah, that's a good point too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if, if you're like efficiency oriented and you just want something lightweight but you, and you're maybe sticking to like less rocky, maybe slightly flatter trails, then yeah, these would be perfect. All right, so that's good for our low cuff shoes. Next we have kind of a mid-tier shoe. So I have the Hoka Speed Goat Mid GTX shoes. These ones are technically a trail runner, but I really like using these uh, for backpacking and hiking. They're really comfortable. They got a little bit of a rocker, so it's more natural movement forward. They are traditional lace-up. They have more support here, but it is still a little bit softer. It's not like some of those really stiff like leather boots. Then they've got Vibram Mega Grip soles on the bottom. Nice and grippy. Holds on to some rocks when you get into more technical terrain. But it's good. It's nice if you like moving fast. You like a little bit of support. Maybe you're running um, down some of those steeper sections all around like one of my favorite shoes. Yeah, these are surprisingly light for their height. Definitely a cool like hybrid option if you want ankle co coverage plus trail running. I'll jump into my mid shoe. This is the Anacapa from Hoka. Similar to Cat's shoe, but a little bit more in like the dedicated hiking realm. And we're also gonna see some similar features here. We have the Vibram mega grip for traction and this, these soles are going to be a little bit stiffer i think that's going to give you like some rock protection so if you step directly on a rock it's not going to like hurt your foot we also have gore-tex technology in these so this is going to help for like puddle crossings obviously you still want to make sure that the water doesn't go up above the cuff of the shoe but as long as you're yeah as long as you're below that cuff line then your feet are going to stay nice and dry super nice if you're in like maybe a wetter wetter area other than that we have a full synthetic layup so synthetic's good because it's super breathable. The Gore-Tex membrane is going to slightly cut down on breathability, but yeah, the, the synthetic upper will give you like a nice compromise on that end. Uh, yeah, I think that about covers it for our mid shoes. Sweet. Let's move into these high cuffs. As we move into like dedicated boot realm, we're going to be talking about backpacking when it comes to these bad boys. These are the Solomon Quest 4 GTX backpacking boots. I have a solid number of miles in these boots and I really like them. I'm like newer to backpacking, and so when I'm wearing a big heavy pack, I like the added security of the increased ankle coverage that comes along with these. Um, can help with injury prevention and just like general trail stability. Other than that, we have the Gore-Tex membrane, which I spoke about a little bit with the previous shoes. Really like this, you know, for, for backpacking, there's like a big advantage to like taking the direct path, and if there's water in the way, no big deal. And other than that, we have a leather upper material so i'm a fan of this as well it, it might be a little bit of a sacrifice in breathability but a huge advantage with durability when you're backpacking you, you get tired and you might you might misstep here yeah. and there <laughs> i think when you get tired or if you um, have the tendency to roll your ankles like i do that pretty often it's nice having that extra support 
Definitely, yeah. And the and the added durability of the leather, you know, if you misstep, you end up maybe walking into a branch or scraping up against a rock. The leather's definitely gonna gonna support you there. Um, like I said, not the most breathable option. I haven't I've had these above 80 degrees uh, one time, and I was definitely feeling a little hot hot in the feet area. But below 80, I, I'm very comfortable in these. I don't think the breathability is like a huge issue by any means. Cool. Well, as you can see, Kendall has kind of the more traditional lineup of shoe options for hiking and backpacking. On my side, we have some other alternatives that we want to talk about. So we already touched upon how the Hoka Speed Goats are technically a trail runner. They are a lot more lightweight so if you want to move a little bit faster i like having the ankle support that's why i went with the mid mid height they also just are super comfortable um trail runners typically will also dry faster than a hiking boot with the leather and all the extra material in them they tend to soak up water and stay wet so you know like we said if it's hot um, or if it's really wet, maybe you don't want the big leather boots. If you're going somewhere it's cooler, it's rainier, you may want something more like this. So another alternative I have is the La Sportiva TX4 Approach Shoe. So you can use this if you're doing some bigger climbing missions. Personally, I love it for doing rock scrambles here in the Uintas. So much of our terrain is super rocky, it's super loose, it's very scrambly. Um, so having something that is stiffer with a little bit more support is really good for that. As you can see, like the Hoka's very soft shoe, these, it's very stiff, you mm -hmm. know? It does mean that the break-in period is gonna be a lot longer. I'm still breaking these ones in myself, but if I'm doing like Southridge Superior, it's just a two mile scramble the entire way up. This gives you a lot of support on your toe and heel to just put your toe on the tip of a rock and feel super supported. So that is what I like to use this shoe for. The last one I have is the Teva Hurricane Sandal. This one is going to be a little bit burlier compared to their Universal lineup, but I really like this as a backpacking, hiking shoe. If I'm doing things that are not very technical, it's maybe flatter terrain, or if I'm doing trails that are very water heavy, there's a lot of water crossings. Maybe you're going through flooded slot canyons or you're down mm -hmm. Escalante, kind of backpacking through little water canyons like that. I love having these shoes. It's just not worth taking on and off shoes all the time or just getting things wet and then hiking in wet socks and shoes and getting blisters. So this is really comfortable. Um, it's got good support. It is a little bit stiffer than that universal lineup and it does have a little bit of better grip on some rocks. Yeah, I'm glad you brought your Tevas because that brings up a good point. I always like to bring a pair of sandals uh, for even for technical backpacking, put them in or on your backpack. And then when you get to camp, you can get out of your sweaty boots and put some, yeah, some comfy sandals on with no socks. Totally. So that's our complete lineup. Um, we can talk a little bit more about break-in period and kind of what you want to wear with your hiking boots and shoes mm -hmm. for the break-in period. Um, it kind of depends on the shoe. If you have something that's more like a trail runner, like a low uh, hiking shoe like this, the break-in period tends to be a lot faster. It is just softer material, so your foot moves more easily with it. When you have something that's stiffer, has leather, it's got more material like that, it is gonna take a much longer time. So don't be like too worried if you get some hot spots initially or just you know some pain here and there. It usually it takes a little while with those stiffer shoes to work those out. I will say for breaking them in, it's good to wear them around the house at home. You know, if you're just going out in town for a little bit, just start getting more mileage into them, start doing some shorter hikes and kind of like ramp that up a bit. So I wouldn't say buy a stiffer shoe the day before you're going on a big trip. Make sure you get them at least like a month in advance and start breaking them in. Yeah, that's a good point. I think prep and break-in is key, especially for backpacking boots. Like I think it's a good idea to do some hikes with like a weighted pack as well. So you're, you're breaking in your shoes, but you're also breaking in your body. Like, totally. you know what I mean? If you're, if you're not used to traveling long distances with a heavy pack, um, yeah, definitely break in your new gear, do some practice runs before you, you know, are out there self-supported on the trail. Well, we have some shoes that have Gore-Tex. Kendall, do you want to jump into that a little bit? So Gore-Tex is, uh, is a membrane that is used on like apparel and garments as well as in shoes. And it's basically just an added layer of material on the outside of the shoe. Gore-Tex is, uh, is super breathable as far as waterproofing goes, but it, it's definitely important to understand that a, you know, a garment or shoe without Gore-Tex is going to be a little bit more breathable than, than like really any waterproof uh, alternative. And, and yeah, it's, it's, 
it's what it sounds like. It basically prevents water from permeating the, the exterior of the shoe. And, and like Kat mentioned, like if you're worried about getting wet, like this is basically the biggest measure you can take. You still have to make sure with shoes specifically that water is staying below the cuff line, right? Water can still enter above the cuff and get your socks wet, which is uh, definitely not gonna be a good time and something you wanna make sure to avoid. But yeah, I, I personally prefer to opt for Gore-Tex shoes, especially like in this area, like it's, it's almost August and we still have like a lot of melting snow, a lot of like standing snow in some of the hikes that I'm doing. And so it's just nice because yeah, there's water running across the trails everywhere. And I just prefer to not have to pay super close attention and just move to where I'm going. Well, the last thing we want to mention is socks. There's a lot of different socks out there. Generally, you want to make sure your sock height is at least the height of your shoe. That way you don't get any rubbing and blisters on your ankles. Um, the other thing too is depending on what weather you're hiking or backpacking in will determine a little bit about the thickness. Sometimes it is, it just really comes down to personal preference. If it's really hot, personally, I like thinner socks. If it's really cold, I'll go with like a thick wool sock. Some socks are better at wicking away moisture about keeping um, the smells down a little bit, which is also nice. Different socks have also compression around like your ankle for more ankle support. Some will have padding that's just around your toes or your heels. Um, if you have kind of more hot spots in those areas. Definitely, yeah. And if you're just like getting into hiking and you want a good starting point, I think like no matter what kind of hiking you want to do, a great place to start with socks is just a merino wool, like a high quality merino wool sock. We sell a brand called Darn Tough that makes some like really high quality stuff. And and I think merino for backpacking is especially nice. It has like natural anti-odor properties, which is nice when you're yeah out on the trail with, with like not a lot of backup clothing. And yeah, it, it does really well with like moisture control. Um, aside from merino, like I think if you're like maybe just want to do more casual hikes, like a synthetic blend for socks is going to be like totally appropriate, still very breathable. And yeah, like Kat mentioned, uh, compression socks I think are popular, especially like more towards the running and trail running side of things. Okay, last thing I wanted to mention with socks is it's sometimes nice to carry an extra pair of socks. Like you can always cut down weight with the types of shoes, the amount of clothes and like other things you're bringing. But I always try, try to pack an extra pair of socks. That way, if you do get wet or you're just like really sweaty and you want to swap out for a fresh pair, that's really handy. I also like to leave a fresh pair of socks um, or sandals even in my car. So when I'm done, I have something clean and fresh to put on. Yeah, extra pair of socks. That's a pro tip. And I think it's important to remember too that weight on your feet will fatigue your body much quicker than like weight in a pack and so like wet heavy socks or footwear never good well that about wraps us up if you guys enjoy this video please like comment and subscribe to our channel we would love to hear what other stuff you guys want to see us talk about yeah and if you guys have any questions be sure to reach out to a gearhead and uh, we'll make sure to answer all of them cool well we'll see you guys out there yep.